Hi guys, we're going to finish up this half of a chapter and our last new lessons of the week uh, by going back and doing some word problems because we kind of skipped over those. We were really focusing on solving equations, but we also need to be able to write an equation and solve an equation for a word problem. So that's what we'll be doing today. Don't forget that you should pause the video so that you can write the word problem down in your notes. I will not stop and wait for you to write it down. So pause the video right now and then pick it up when you're ready. This board problem says an online DVD rental company offers a gift certificate that you can use to purchase rental plans. You have a gift certificate for $30. The plan that you select costs $5 per month. How many months can you purchase with your gift certificate? Now, since we're in algebra class, we are going to write an algebra equation to solve this. Also, while this may be a very simplistic word problem that maybe you already know the answer to, we are eventually going to work our way into more difficult word problems. And so I want you to feel comfortable and confident solving the more basic word problems using algebra so that when we get to the more difficult ones, you'll have a good foundation to work off of. When you're solving a word problem, there's going to be three different parts to your answer. For the first part, you're going to need to define a variable. That means, tell me which letter you plan to use, and tell me what it's representing. Since it's a word problem, it stands for something. To figure out what your letter is going to represent, you want to read the question part of the problem. And that's where you'll figure out what you're solving for. So in the question part, it says, how many months, how many months can you purchase your gift card for? So the question is looking for an amount of months, and that's what your variable should represent. Now, if you just like your variable to always be the letter X, because that's what you're used to, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes, though, I like to choose a letter that's more in line with what it's representing. And so in this problem, I'm going to choose to use the letter M to mean the amount of months. It's important after you've chosen your variable that you actually use that variable to write your equation. And that's the second thing we're gonna ask you for is to write an algebra equation. In an algebra equation, you need your variable, you need an equal sign, that's what makes it an equation, and then you should be using some numbers from the problem. When you're reading the problem, you can find your numbers. Here's the number 30. Here's the number five. Then you also want to look for the word that is your variable. So the other thing I'm going to look for is this word month. Since five and month were both in the same sentence, on one side of my equation, I'm going to put the number five in my letter M. 30 is the total amount of money that I have, and totals go on the other side of the equal sign. So on one side, I will have a 5 and an M, and on the other side of the equal sign, I will have the number 30. Now, the next thing I need to do is figure out how are the 5 and the M connected? Are they added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? Those are our four basic operations. Remember, when you see the word per, that means it's multiplying. So when you see the word per, you're going to multiply the number and the variable together. And so my equation for this problem is 5 times m equals 30. 5 per month gives me a total of $30. So this is my equation that I would use. Again, sometimes we will ask this on an answer line, so you need to be able to write this out. Then you would solve. I'll let you do that on your own. And then the final answer that you want to write down is the answer that you got. Now, since this was a word problem, your answer does need to include words. Your answer should be a sentence. And your sentence should restate what the original question was asking. So in this problem, the question says, how many months can you purchase with your gift card? So now you want to restate that as a sentence. I can purchase six months with my gift card, or you can purchase six months with your gift card. Notice that I um, put my answer, which was six, because that's 30 divided by five, right? And then I have my units, it's months. And I, I basically just rewrote the entire question. So I didn't just say six months, 
I wrote it in a nice sentence. And when I read the sentence, I should be able to tell what the question was asking. So you want to make sure that you're including all the information from the question. Again, there are three answers to this problem. The first answer is what letter are you going to use and what does it represent? The next answer is an equation, a solvable equation using the letter that you chose. And the final answer is a sentence that restates the question and also includes the answer. Let's try one more of these together. Again, pause the video to write this down. You have already read 117 pages of a book. You are one third of the way through the book. Write and solve an equation to find the number of pages in the book. So again, we're gonna start by defining our variable and we get that from the question. The question is usually the last sentence that they wrote. So write and solve blah, blah, blah. Find, find the number of pages in the book. So that's what I'm solving for. I'm trying to figure out how many pages total does the book have? I'm gonna use the letter P for pages. If you wanna use X, that's fine. Okay, so that's my first answer. I'm gonna use the letter P and it represents the number of pages in the book, the total number of pages in the book. Okay, so now we gotta look for numbers. Now, if I'm just skimming this, I only see one number, 117. So you gotta make sure you're reading it very carefully. There is another number, it's right here, one third. One third. Okay, so it wasn't written out as a number, but it, it is a number. And then remember, we also want to figure out, you know, where my variable that I'm solving for, where else does it like occur in the problem? And so the other place that I'm talking about the, the whole book is in this sentence, one third of the way through the whole book. Okay, so the one third and the P for pages of the book will go together on one side. In total so far, I've read 117 pages. That's going to go on the other side. And then we just need to figure out, again, the one-third and the P for the pages. Like, how are those connected together? So there's this teeny tiny word right here. It's only two letters, of. And of, in math class, means multiplying again. So any time that you read the word of in a math sentence, they're telling you to do multiplication. Okay, so of means multiplying. So I'm going to take my one-third of multiplied by the pages in the book, and that should equal the 117 pages that I've already I've already done. Um, now you're going to solve this. I know we were struggling a little bit earlier this week with how to solve these. So just a refresher: you're going to multiply by the denominator. So multiply by the three, and these threes cancel, and then you would need to multiply 117 times three. For a final answer on a word problem, you're not just going to write the number. You're not even going to write like a number and a word. You do need to write an entire sentence. So this one wanted me to find the number of pages in the book. So I say the number of pages in the book is, or there are 351 pages in the book. Okay. So these were all one-step word problems. In our second video, we will learn how to write and solve two-step word problems. So I'll see you then.